As I've said many times before, when you start meditating, you want to make sure you're in the mood to meditate. Your mind is ready. You see the value of training the mind. And then you can focus in on the breath. But sometimes you find that it takes a while to get into the mood, and that's perfectly fine. If there are mental habits or ways of thinking that get in the way of the mind settling down, sometimes you have to spend an hour or so sorting them out. Part of the mind says you've got to think about your work, or you're thinking about a particular problem in the family. Or if it wants entertainment, you've got to argue with it. First listen to it, see what its case is, and try to find where the holes are in the argument. If you're willing to take time with us, you find after a while that you begin to recognize the pattern of the arguments. You get quicker at seeing where they really aren't all that convincing. You notice especially the, the ones that come on with a lot of force and seem to be just yelling at you. Those are the ones who are really lacking in, in reason. Years back when I was working on the, the revisions of the Buddhist monastic code, I was receiving criticisms from different parts of the world. People who didn't agree with this interpretation didn't agree with that interpretation. And I found that you know, if their points were well taken, if they had clear, a clear basis in the text, they usually tended to be fairly decent in their tone of voice. But when they got insulting and nasty, it was pretty much a sign that the argument was weak. And they tried to make up for the weakness in the argument with the amount of disdain contempt they were showing, thinking that somehow that would push me into their camp. Well, this isn't only between people, this kind of behavior. Your own mind does that to you as well. Voices in the mind that tend to be awfully pushy are usually the ones that don't have much reason behind them. So you have to learn how not to let yourself get pushed by them and to recognize where their weakness is. Then you offer your reasons for why you should be meditating. It's good to be thinking about that for a while, because you've got to strengthen those members of the committee, the ones that want to meditate. And if you're willing to take some time by sorting things out like this, you're developing a quality that actually gets useful in the practice of concentration, which is evaluation. You're learning to evaluate all the problems that are going to come your way. That phrase in the formula for right mindfulness, putting aside greed and distress with reference to the world, that's one of the functions of evaluation. So if you find that that's what you've got to do, do it. Even if it takes up the whole hour and you're not with your breath all that much. Still learning how to think things through this way is an important part of the meditation. You're developing appropriate attention. And you're also working on that phrase that's in the beginning of the description of right concentration. Secluded from unskillful qualities. Vivicha agusalehi tamehi. In other words, you put up a protection against the things that would pull you out of the concentration. And what are those unskillful qualities? Well, it starts with wrong view and goes through wrong resolve, wrong speech, wrong action, wrong livelihood, wrong effort, wrong mindfulness. In other words, you've got to clear away all those wrong versions of the path. And then you get the mind in right concentration. Of course, clearing the unskillful side away isn't enough. You've got to replace it with the skillful side. 
So, for example, when you've got an argument that says, I can't think about that, I can't think about the breath right now, I've got to worry about tomorrow, or I've got to hash over the events today in the office. Okay, apply right view. The right view says, well, tomorrow is pretty uncertain, but you do know that you'll need skillful mental qualities to deal with it. How are you going to develop them? By meditating. As for hashing over the events in the office, the things that other people said, remember it's their karma. If they're things you said or did, you have to ask yourself, okay, what's the lesson? If I made a mistake, how can I learn from that? Take a little time to learn from it. Then resolve you're not going to repeat the mistake and then spread lots of goodwill. That gets you right into right resolve. That you don't want to harm yourself, you don't want to harm anybody else. By firming up that resolve, it makes it easier to follow through with all the other right elements of the path. And there you arrive at right concentration. If a teacher respect, ask yourself, well, what would the teacher have to say about these events? I was staying with the Jean Fouillon. The first couple of years I was with him, I had lots and lots of questions. And then I found as time went on that as soon as a question would come into my mind, the first thought was, let's take this to Jean Fouillon. And then the second thought was, no, I know exactly what he's going to say. Why bother him? And occasionally I test it. But you find after a while that if there's someone you really respect, you do begin to pick up their habits. And that's an important part of the meditation. It's getting some skillful voices in your mind. And get their perspective on the things that normally consume your thoughts. So if getting the mind in the mood to meditate takes the whole meditation session. That's perfectly fine. You'll have another meditation session tomorrow or later today. And with each session you should get, get quicker and quicker at dealing with these things so they take up less time. When you get skilled at dealing with them, you'll find that it's a lot easier to just get the mind to settle down right away, and it stays that way, even when you leave the meditation. Because even the slightest thought that would pull you away is something you've already seen through. There's a phrase they have in Thai that something is as transparent as a shadow puppet screen. And there's, everything just shines right through the puppet screen. You see it all. And you want your thoughts to be then transparent. So you can see where they're coming from. You can recognize, oh, this one is coming from greed, and this one is coming from wrong view, and this one's coming from wrong resolve. That really undercuts their power. Because you find it easier and quicker to get in the mood and stay in the mood. And your mind is fully ready to work with the breath. 